Well, I am very privileged today to be joined by Melissa Sassy, Dr. Melissa Sassy, in fact, who, and she is actually an expert in technology and also in education. And we are going to be discussing how, how advances in AI are redefining education and the future of learning. And I'm, I'm actually very, very excited about that because my dad used to, used to be a professor and I remember when he, he explained to me about the uproar that happened when people, basically people were just super worried about like being able to have a textbook in an exam, right? And he was like, no, you can have a textbook in an exam, no problem. And he, and he pioneered that approach, right? And, you know, he's an ex-MIT uh, MIT professor. If you stay here till the end of this, we are going to help you to understand how you can benefit from the future of online learning. And before we get to that, I know you've got some great stats, Mel, because you, you love a good stat, as do I. I do. I do. And in case you see me like looking down, as much as I'd love to say that I'm good at also memorizing stats, you know, I uh, I like to make sure that I don't accidentally give you the wrong stat and then I'm in trouble. I get fired. I don't get to come back. It would be bad, embarrassing. My mom would not be proud. All right, cool. So, you know, if you think about the, you know, kind of general ed tech you know, category, if you will, you know, market capitalization of, you know, that particular category is, you know, in the, like, I think it's like 20, 230 billion right now, give or take. And then it's expected to be like 400 and some odd billion, you know, in the next few years, AI and using AI within the field of education is expected to be 20 billion by 2027. You know, it's still in its infancy right now. By next year, if you think about learning management systems, so these are like your ed tech platforms or, you know, the systems that are used by, you know, either private schools, public schools, informal education, AI is going to be incorporated into those solutions, you know, 47% of them, so half, roughly half of them. Now let's dive into kind of the teacher, you know, kind of the educator conversation. You know, we all hear about the workload of, uh, of an educator, you know, many other challenges that our teachers have, um, which we're not going to get into today, but big shout out to the um, educators of the, of the world. 20 to 40% of that workload um, that they have, you know, day by day, you know, week by week, AI can really kind of, I don't, I don't want to say replace because I, I don't like that conversation around, you know, AI is going to come and replace blah. I see it more as augment, make you more productive and kind of take some of the, uh, the load off of your shoulders. All right. Two more stats. And I know this is a lot, but, you know, I think in this, uh, you know, field of education and AI, there's a lot to unpack. Um, I really had, I think, difficulty trying to narrow down, you know, um, which, which ones I wanted to, to mention because there's a lot of great stats. So 86% of let's say the education sector. So individuals who are either, you know, teachers or administrators, thought leaders, whatever. 86% believe that AI is a vital part of education. And I mean that from a skills perspective as well. You know, if you're not incorporating AI into your job, you know, is there a risk of you being replaced? Heck yeah, there is. And there's this conversation around, um, you know, are managers going to be replaced by AI? Not necessarily, maybe for those who don't incorporate, but for those who do, yeah. All right, so 39% of educators want to use AI, but haven't yet. So again, still in its infancy, a lot of uh, room to grow, and we all need to spruce up our skills so we can be prepared for the future of work and make meaningful use of the technology in front of us. So yeah, those are some of the steps. Wow. Crazy, right? Lots of wow. stuff to, to grow and learn and do. And yeah. I mean, 39% of teachers. I mean, I think something, you know, we've seen how fast chat GPT has arrived, but, but we've also, we also know so many businesses that are just, they're sitting there and they're like, well, what are, what are we going to do? Like, how are we going to integrate this? And, and, and they are, they're, they're waiting for other people to, to take action. And this, this sounds like a lot of these educators as well and the policies that they have, uh, that they're sort of hiding uh, behind because they can't do anything themselves. But I, I, I bet you that I would, I, would, I would put a lot of money on it, actually. I bet you that 
a load of that 39% are actually experimenting with chat GPT. They're probably using it already because, because actually in many cases, teachers are overworked. They are, um, you know, but remember now, like I think chat GPT is amazing, but it's still kind of like people using it are still the early adopters. And, you know, we still have, you know, uh, we have an aging workforce and not to say that, you know, if you're aging, you know, you don't have tech skills. Well, I'm not saying that. Let's be super clear. But I think that, um, you know, there's significant, you know, groups of people, even in the developed world, um, who lack tech skills. You know, they've been forced to get tech skills, um, you know, in the, uh, you know, in the classroom due to COVID. But, you know, it's still misunderstood in, uh, in many respects. And I think part of that is that fear, fear of the unknown. You don't know what you don't know. And, you know, is you know, learning about AI, is that like a techie thing? And we still have this, you know, kind of uh, bias, this individual kind of like bias that each of us have um, who believe, you know, and how many times do you hear those words? I'm not technical. I'm not a techie, you know, oh, I'm, I don't do computers, um, you know, which is part of my, you know, kind of a life's work, if you will, to eradicate those things, um, you know, from the, the human vocabulary so that we all understand that, you know, we can be technical we are actually technical. It may just be that we were exposed to tech in the wrong way. It may be that we have um, self-selected out without truly understanding, um, you know, how, you know, how we can learn and maybe the way in which, um, you know, we learned or tried to learn was uh, counter to our actual learning style, which funny enough is something that AI can help with. It helps to you know, kind of uh, personalized. And I think, you know, I don't want to jump ahead. Well, no, I mean, I think, you, you know, we're, we're, we're edging into the future of equitable learning, right? And and that's what we're basically talking about here. We're talking about, you know, you, you mentioned it to me before we jumped on here about how, you know, AI is great at crunching data, right? And we, we know this, yeah? But, but uh, and actually, you know, it leads into a whole privacy conversation. And, uh, and I've had that conversation with Monique Morrow, who I know you know, and... Yeah, oh, she's she's super. She's so great. so if everyone wants yeah. to listen to that, that's in one that's in series uh, series six. We have that uh, we have that in there. Um, I think it's episode number one actually. But but in terms of the future of equitable learning, you said something about people being able to analyze learning styles based upon the, the outcomes that yeah. students um, could could generate. I think it's both in, in input and mm -hmm. output. I don't think it's necessarily just output. I think there's many different data, you know, pieces of data that can be used, you know, both the data that, you know, is already being collected in the school, plus there's probably, you know, potential, you know, uh, areas of integration and interoperability, which, you know, obviously we want to, you know, take care of uh, sharing too much information and maintain our of course. privacy and that sort of thing. But, of course. You know, I love, you know, the concept of being able to um, think about, you know, our student data or even, you know, and I say student because I look at this as lifelong learning mm -hmm. as well. We're all students yeah. of, uh, of the world and it doesn't matter whether you're four or 104, we need to continue to um, learn and, and grow. So I see it as, you know, identifying uh, learning patterns, patterns that the human eye may not necessarily have been able to uh um, to recognize or, or see, you know, and obviously like machine learning and AI has the ability to kind of see beyond, uh, you know, some of the things we might not, not normally catch. Um, I think it also looks at preferences, you know, what, what excites you? What do you want to do? It's not just about what are you good at? What do you like? What fires you up? You know, it also looks like kind of like that personalized, um, learning journey by, you know, kind of identifying, um, you know, for example, I've got ADHD. Really? You'd never it's have, you'd enough. never you have, never have guessed. I know. How did you not guess? Uh, As I'm sitting here under the table going like this with my finger. It's hilarious, my but toes. you know what? You made me smile. And I smile face. away because you, you made me think about another interview that I did with, with a tech CEO who, who's, who's bang into online learning. He's, he's bang into continued professional development as we are, right? We're like nuts. Like we just want to develop, yeah. you know, or my yeah. dad is the same. Yeah. And, and it's and it's and it's interesting because it's it's finding that childlike enthusiasm that you had when you were a child and 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 actually if you can put that together when you are looking at all of these 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 areas like redefining education and and helping helping it to become more equitable 
then then that is really going to give you equ equitable learning, isn't it? Because that enthusiasm is what helps people. And, and it's not just about equitable learning. It's about kind of um, really thinking about how do you enable people to make the, uh, the impossible possible. And what I mean by that is, again, going back to that conversation around, I'm not a techie, I'm not creative, I can't sing, whatever it is, I don't do math, I'm not good at science. I have this fundamental belief, and this is just really, I think about it, you know, from a technical perspective, but I think you can apply it to any field. And that's, I think in many cases, each of us have a, a, a style. Each of us have, you know, preferences and the way in which we, you know, we also have like, you know, different things we respect or love or look up to or, you know, different things that might be, you know, our role model, whatever. Imagine learning in a way that enables you to access your role model, your preferred way of learning, how you want to learn, you know, um, what I, for example, I'm not a linear thinker. If you give me something in a very linear fashion and it's like keeping the train on the tracks, I'm bored as hell. I've shut off. I'm doing something else. By the way, I'm doing 10 other things at the same time. You know, so how do you keep both the neurodiverse and you normal folks in the world? Now, I'm just enabling I've got to interrupt to you there because, yeah. because actually, you know, just this last, last week or week before I heard about how yeah. they are yeah. being able to map brain waves uh, with with yeah. with people. So so lie detector tests will become you know brainwave enhanced, right? They had eighty two percent accuracy in 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 these things, right? So 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 I be, I it, it's gonna stuff. it's gonna happen. It's a matter of time, right? So if you can put if you can yeah. put together that's right the 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 access of brain waves, right? to the access of learning style yeah. to the access of input output and you and you can you can say to people well look you yeah, take this what, little what test we plug you in yeah. and and you you give us the privacy to do that we're allowed to use your data for a test period of say half an hour and we can work out or 10 minutes we can work yeah. out how quickly you learn how you learn what motivates you what encourages you to learn new things and and it's so exciting. So what is an overview then, uh, Melissa, of how technology is shaping the, the future of education? Yeah, so I think we look at data, you know, data, predictive modeling, you know, personalization, you know, we talked about equity and, and inclusion, but you know, it's also about teachers, educators, you know, kind of how do we enable them to have, you know, kind of activities around, you know, where they're spending less time doing tactical planning, more time thinking about, you know, strategy. But, you know, I would be remiss, we would be remiss if we didn't talk about, we talked about a lot of the positives, you know, there are risks and there are challenges when it comes to, you know, values and ethics, you know, predictions are, you know, we're going to have more access to data, you know, more modeling, more access to, you know, media, um, People are going to have to have information literacy to be able to decipher what's in front of them. We've got to make sure that we understand, um, you know, whether, you know, it's trustworthy or not. Is it misinformation? Is it disinformation? How do we make sure that, you know, it's fair, it's unbiased, it's trustworthy, it's transparent? You know, um, there's accountability. It has a social benefit or economic benefit, again, balancing these things together. We got to think about privacy and security. We've talked a lot about the, you know, the positives, um, but there are a lot of, you know, risks as well. So if you think about that, we need to make sure, you know, that our algorithms or the output, whatever, it's fair, it's unbiased, which we all are biased. Oh yeah, right? and teachers too, and that's another. We teachers also are, are very biased. It can be, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's trustworthy. It's transparent. You know, whoever's built, whatever they build, um, there's some accountability. Um, there's a social, economic, whatever kind of, there's a benefit. Um, we're thinking about privacy and security, inclusiveness. And we also need to make sure it's safe and secure. So I know that was a whole lot of stuff. You know, I think there are different, you know, companies that ladder up into different schools of thought. But I think overarchingly, one-on-one -on -one models are going mainstream. Individualization or personalization is now reality. It's going to become even more of a reality. Tools are going to be AI first, not an afterthought. 
and our assessments and our credentialing and all of that stuff is going to be much easier than it is right now. And it's my hope and my dream that um, fact checking will be something that can happen in unbiased fashion. You know, famous last words, but I love the thought, plug me into something that can tell me even about myself. So forget about education for a second. Let's learn, you know, why do we like the things we like? How can we learn better? Imagine the power of understanding our personality types, our weaknesses, our excitement, why we like the things we like. Super powerful. Yeah, absolutely. And earlier in life, the better, really, when it comes to these things, because then we're more in control of what happens to us and how we right. how we shape yeah. our lives, right? Because we should have the power to shape our lives. That's and right. and this is this is the real the yeah. real thing. I mean, getting to the getting to the main point here, right? Is you know how how you can benefit yeah. from the future of online learning is is massive, and it's not just it's not just learning new things. It's, it's making money, right? Like it's, it's starting businesses. It's, it's yeah. like, there, there, there are so many opportunities here to benefit from, from this. Like we could talk for 20, yeah. 20, 30 minutes about the benefits and the opportunities are there. I mean, teachers saving time. I know, you know I was sitting here like, oh my you know, God, my I'm brain, like, I have to get this out of my not, brain right now. My, I know, I know. Like, <laughs> yeah, like teachers yeah. saving time, like students uh, saving time. Um, those are just two, just two things. I mean, the benefit, I mean, it's, it's, it's huge. Like coming up with business ideas, starting a business as an educator, becoming, because there's this big skills gap. And, and what's happening is, is that I forget the stat, but because, uh, it was a while back, but we need X amount of million yeah. more teachers, like millions and millions more teachers. But the thing is, is that that is a real challenge and, and that is going to help reduce that need uh to recruit all these teachers because we're going to have these these new tools so people are going to be able to be served better learning kind of journeys and that opens an opportunity up I it, you know kind of exactly as we don't need to recruit more teachers i look at it as um enabling the teacher to become more effective efficient um uh, targeted strategic so that that teacher is not just kind of a looking at how do they manage the classroom of like all these 30 kids who learn in different ways, like different things, you know, um, learn at different speeds, you know, that that teacher has the tools that he, she, they need um, to, again, enable those, those students to have greater education outcomes, right? So uh, that's kind of how I look at it. So from a productivity standpoint, point uh value standpoint not necessarily mm -hmm. yeah you know replacing the teacher because we still need educators this stuff is not going to replace human interaction mm -hmm. i agree completely but it's gonna it's gonna alleviate i think a lot of the worry of this skills gap i think there's going to be a transitional period but 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 this opens up so so many benefits and potential business opportunities but the main one really is it's like you can learn about anything that you want right and and you're going to be able to learn about anything that you want in in an optimum way for your brain which means that for us productivity nuts right like i'm productivity nut as well right like I love to just get stuff done in the shortest amount of time so it's going to help you to 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 learn faster to perhaps not learn things because actually they're not relevant to you so there's going to be all sorts of different analysis of of learning journeys of you know necessary skills that are actually probably not even going to be needed in in the space of five five years time so so it's going to enable people yeah. to to have more data around that and actually not waste their time learning things that are really uh, a waste of their time completely you know have you got anything you, you else you think people are going to benefit from uh in in this context Gosh. it's a massive it's a massive thing I, I you know i'm just excited about the outcome based stuff because i look at it and you know and it's kind of a personal story for me um you know i you know I, i've always said you know and i, I change that i don't say it anymore you know i used to say like oh i'm not so technical you know and it's funny i work in tech and i was part of you know you know uh creating a, you know, and getting the first, uh, you know, digital skills and readiness, um, you know, definition of the world, um, you know, kind of endorsed, created by the largest engineering organization on the planet, IEEE. Um, and, 
yeah, I used to be the one who said, I'm not technical, I'm not good at computers. Um, and I think the power of, you know, personalized learning, the power of recognizing, you know, patterns, what wakes a person up in the morning, you know, again, what fires them up, what interests them. I think that that can play a significant role in bringing more women and girls, for example, you know, more um, ethnic diversity, for example, into tech, all right? Because I used to think that's not for me, that's for this persona, mm -hmm. because that's what I was taught. And I, you know, I was told like, oh, you probably want to take this class because, you know, uh, computers are really more for boys. I was told that, you know, I was also told, you know, things like, here is where you're going to end up when you're older. Yeah, I was told by a counselor when I was young um, that I was probably never going to amount to uh, anything, that I was going to have a number of different children by, uh, by different fathers, maybe end up in jail, um, you know, not go to college, not do blah, 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 whatever his definition of success looked like. I didn't fit it. And why didn't I not fit it? I didn't realize at that time that I didn't fit it because, um, I, you know, I, I just got bored. You know, I got bored in my classes and I knew that I never had to really study. I just went in, did the stuff and I still got, you know, A's and B's, right? What I didn't understand at that time, I just thought it was like weird and different and stuff like that. So I was like, all right, I'm going to just like hang out with my friends and, you know, probably cause way too much trouble. That's a conversation for another podcast. Not on this show. But, um, we can't be not on this on, show, Mel. We don't we don't do that on this show. No, I can't get fired. I can fire fired. myself. Um, I can fire I'll fire you. I'll fire you if yeah, you like. I can yeah. fire you. No, I'm being good. Okay. Don't fire me. No, don't fire me. I already have a master center <laughs> Um yeah, so you know, I, I later on in life I realized wait a second, it's just that your, you know, your brain, is, you don't think in a linear fashion, your brain is like this ball of yarn, you're more creative, you're more innovative, you're more disruptive, you suck at keeping the train on the tracks, you know, the, this is the way you learn, it's because you're neurodiverse, you have ADHD, and this is, you know, here's all the symptoms mm -hmm. of that. I didn't find that out until I was an adult, and I was like, holy smokes, why did, you know, and I think a lot of times, you know, for those of us who might have had some kind of you know, whether it's a mental challenge or whatever it is, you know, neurodiversity, blah, blah, blah. You know, some of us are, you know, our ADHD came out in different ways. And so it wasn't necessarily recognizable because we weren't running around the classroom, you know, throwing books across the room and, you know, not being able to sit down. It came about in different ways. But we were ways. just bored, right? Like we were just bored, so, right? Like I'm similar in, in that respect. Like you've got to captivate my attention or I get bored and then I become disruptive. And I, and I think, yeah. and that's just like, yeah. most kids are like that right now. And, and, and I think certainly. But mine's on steroids. Mine is like uh -huh. very, it, it's kind of exponentially different right. um, than others. So for example, you know, the entire time I've been sitting here, I've been busy doing, I've been busy in my mind working on two separate things at the same time picking my fingernails, moving my feet, moving my mm -hmm. toes, and also thinking about how am I going to incorporate AI more into some of the things that I'm right. working on. You know, so it's like all this stuff going on and then also thinking about, you know, gosh, I'm hungry. I should have some. I was thinking food. about food, actually. Um, anyway, I was, I I was thinking about that too. But look, it, it, I think the main thing really is, is helping people to get over the roadblocks in their lives to success. And that's, and that's the most that's important right. thing, whether that's starting a business, getting the confidence, getting the skills, getting the connections, getting, you know, and, and that's really how you can benefit from the future of online learning. And Mel, it's an absolute joy. I'm looking forward to hearing more about skills hustle in the next uh, few months and, and years. And, 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 and I'm sure thank it's going to grow into something uh, really amazing. So uh, thank you so much. And thanks everyone for listening. And uh, don't forget to uh, subscribe if you get value from this channel. Thanks very much for listening to Influential Visions. Please make sure you share this episode with your friends and business connections. Thanks. Thanks.